lot of people don't realize that real estate is a sales job. So you're not going to get your license and all of a sudden someone's like, hey, I want to buy. Like you have to be out there prospecting. You have to be out there meeting people. And there's so many different ways of doing that. And if you're not always continually prospecting, your business is not going to last. But for me, it, it's all social media. But I break it down to I do Instagram and I do YouTube. Make the effort to grow, produce and post valuable content. Yeah. And I even got like a TV show out of it, which has been a great opportunity because again, that just elevates my brand. Welcome back to our successful agent series where we feature real estate agents doing big things in real estate. In each episode, we cover the starting point of their real estate journey to really understand what it takes to build a real estate business from the ground floor to the penthouse. Today, we sit down with Alejandra Paladino, an absolute force in the Arizona real estate market, where she ranks as a top real estate agent all across the state. Now, something super impressive about her accomplishments is that she was able to build her real estate business all online. She's been able to leverage her social media accounts without needing to cold call a single person. In fact, her online presence is so powerful that it even landed her her very own TV show. And today, Alejandra is going to share with you how to build a personal brand worth following. She's going to give you the easy way to turn Instagram into a lead generation machine. And we'll break down her video marketing strategy so you don't have to spend thousands of dollars trying to recreate it. So I really hope that you enjoy listening to this successful agent. Welcome back, everybody, to our Successful Agent Series. Today, we have my really good friend and incredible entrepreneur, real estate agent, Alejandra Paladino. She is somebody that's an absolute force, as you heard in the intro. On top of that, you're going to hear a lot of things that even I'm not aware of. So I'm really excited about our conversation today. But before we get into that, Alejandra, how the heck are you? I'm good. <laughs> it's great to connect with you. I'm I'm excited to be here and, you know, share what I can with everyone. I dig it. I dig. Well, let's get right into it. Let's understand how you got into real estate. So how did that come about? Are you a first generation real estate agent or somebody in your family in real estate? How did you, how did you get to where you are right now? Um, so I'm actually first generation real estate agent. Um, but funny enough, a, um, I guess you could say an ex of mine <laughs> about 20 years ago was like, you should be a real estate agent. And I'm like, what, what do you mean? <laughs> like it was like out of left field. Um, but at the time I was a, while I was in college, I was a, uh, brand ambassador. So like, for instance, Nokia phones, when those were popular, I was like, you know, I'd go to events or even some shopping centers and be like, Hey guys, have you seen the new Nokia? And, I, and so I would be promoting the product. And so I'm, I'm one of those people I get excited about what I do. And so because of that, and because I tend to research everything, he was like, you'd be a perfect real estate agent. He's like, you're, you research everything. You can explain everything really well. And you would be excited showing homes, which is true. <laughs> so that has always been in the back of my mind. And then when my family and I moved to Arizona, almost eight years ago, the plan was initially I was going to be a stay at home mom. And then after a year, I'm like, this is terrible. <laughs> this is the hardest job ever. And I decided to get my license. Um, originally it was just going to be part-time because I thought, okay, I'm going to buy a house. I'll just do a few transactions. But once I got into it, I literally took off. Like I was laser focused and I took off running with it. <laughs> so here I am. That's what's up. So I didn't know about the brand ambassador and that explains a yeah. lot. It explains a lot. And yeah. the reason I say that is because yes, I, I obviously the energy and um, you know, you're super approachable, but beyond that, even with some of the videos that I watch on your social media, your YouTube channel and your yeah. um, TV show, which has had several episodes, I believe at this point, the way yeah. that you're able to effectively communicate just from the, from the jump, you're very clear on what the outcome is what the payoff is. You're, You've just been so organic on the video front. So although I didn't know about the brand ambassador part, it really does <laughs> lend itself to that type of conversation, right? So as you're mentioning, you know, yep. somebody, it sounds like you're, you were kind of approaching somebody cold. So you had to quickly engage, retain, yeah. and then yeah. at the end of the day, convert. <laughs> So Which is very, hard. Very valuable. I, nobody wants easy. to stop. To the, nobody wants to stop. They're just walking by and you're like, Hey, 
<laughs> so yeah, it, it is hard. And it taught me to just kind of be able to approach anyone. Um, but also I think what helps me, I guess you could say with a lot of my marketing is I actually have a degree, uh, in business and marketing. And that was like my specialty, like all my classes, I was like top of, in marketing and negotiation. So I'm like, these are skills that a real estate agent uses. So I've been lucky. It's like my kind of path in, in my life has kind of, you know, helped me out to where I'm at today. <laughs> well, that's awesome. Way to choose a career that, um, actually, uh, um, well, educate way to choose education that actually fed into your career. So you weren't doing pottery or something like that. Um, no shot, no, no shots fired to pottery people, but, um, you know, who you are. <laughs> All right. So let's talk about this. This is a question I really like to ask our agents, especially the ones that some would view as have made it right. So either, you know, there's a certain base floor when it comes to production or success that they've achieved. Um, where did your first transaction come from? Talk to us about that. Where, where did it come from? What was the transaction like? Because certainly where you're at right now is radically different than when yeah. you started. Yeah. So funny enough, my first transaction was um, my buy transaction was actually because I worked rentals in the, in the very beginning. Most agents don't want to work rentals because they are as much work as a you know buy and sell transaction, right? But I was a hungry agent and I was, you know, I just thought I'm going to do it. I don't, I don't care. I'll help the rent, the renters. Right. Because the goal is, yeah, maybe you can flip them to buy. And this family, I helped them get a rent rental, but then within like two weeks, they were contacting me saying, no, we, we want to buy, we're going to break the lease. We don't want to rent. And, and they were smart because the market was started going up. But the best part is I'm a big fake it till you make it. And so like, I just, I, you know, I, I was prepared. I did have a mentor, but she actually wasn't available, um, at all hours, you know, which is when we're sometimes writing offers. So I reached out to some friends, uh, that I went to real estate school with uh, while well, training for my brokerage. And I, I remember messaging them and they sent me a copy of their purchase contract. And I literally looked at it. I'm like, okay, let me make sure I have everything filled out correctly. Meanwhile, my clients to this day, because I'm friends with them, they're like, wow, you've been the best real estate agent we've ever had. <laughs> like I've never told them you were my first transaction. Like, cause I was, I was just very detailed. It's like from start to finish, I make sure that I am doing the best that I can for my clients. I make sure that if I'm, I get them as much as I can. I'm like, Hey, even if they don't need the fridge, washer and dryer, I'm going to ask for it. You know, <laughs> little things like that. If I can get them money for closing costs, if they don't need it, Hey, it helps my buyers. Why not? So I just try to do little things like that going above and beyond. And yeah, to this day, they've told me that and they bought multiple homes before. So they weren't first time home buyers. So I'm like, that's a big compliment. I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> That's phenomenal. That's phenomenal. Um, you know, if this was a prank channel, I would say, well, do I have a do I have a surprise for you in the waiting room? We have oh. your first clients <laughs> and now they know. I know. Um, but it's not a prank channel, but something that you mentioned at the beginning was so important. And oftentimes I know I undervalued it. Um, but I feel a lot of real estate agents do as well. You mentioned, you know, my either your broker or mentor or whomever was in um you know a support role might not be there 24 7 when you're starting out that is the most important thing right so as we know with real estate school i know people make fun of it but it doesn't necessarily teach you how to do the business per se it teaches you how to pass a test but it might not teach you the actually doing the work so i know in my first transaction one, I actually sold my first uh, listing for free. It actually cost me money to do it. Oh, no. um, but also <laughs> I didn't know anything. So whenever I would have a conversation with my first client, which was Tom, he'd ask me a question on, hey, why are they asking for this? I'd say, oh, I'm getting a call like I was busy. And then um, I'll call you right back. Well, no, I'm calling Charles, who actually is a good friend of of mine and was my mentor. It's like, hey, Tom's asking for this. What, what's, what does that mean? And say, oh, you need this, uh, you need this amendment. It's for this. And here's how to present it. Agents that don't have that, yeah. I don't know what they do. I don't know what they do. And oftentimes it's we, un, we, <laughs> we were looking at, regardless of brokers, it doesn't matter what brokers you're a part of. 
we look at the fees and like, we're like, Oh, well let's negotiate like to the best fees. You have no value to add right now. Like you have, you have zero expertise on you're costing brokers a hundred percent of the time. You're cost brokers to bring you on, train you, support you and provide the resources. So oftentimes we're trying to be, a, uh, how can I say this without sounding too callous? We're trying to negotiate from a place of power when we don't necessarily have it. So something you mentioned just really resonated with me that that support system is so important. And oftentimes we just don't, we just overlook it. Am I out of pocket? Does that make sense? No, that's yeah, that totally makes sense. Cause even though I'm, I'm a big fake until you make it and I, and I thought I was prepared. Yeah. People will ask you questions and you're like, Oh. <laughs> and you don't want to look all like, Oh, I don't know. So you're like, you know what? I will get back to you. <laughs> and, and, uh, and then, yeah, having someone to be able to contact is important because there's, there's no way. I mean, I, you know, after you've done a few transactions, you get more confident, but th- there's still questions that arise, you know, after that, that you're like, I have no idea. <laughs> so it is, it's having the right support is very important. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. Well, Let's let's fast forward a little bit here in your experience in real estate. Let me, let me rephrase that question. What has been the most surprising thing about being a real estate agent that maybe from the outside looking in just wasn't so <laughs> evident that kind of surprised you? That real estate is a sales job. So you're not going to get your license and all of a sudden someone's like, Hey, I want to buy. Like you have to be out there prospecting. You have to be out there meeting people. And there's so many different ways of doing that. And if you're not always continually prospecting, your your business is not going to last. And that's, I guess, what's the most surprising is that you're, you're constantly having to prospect that. And then the other thing is as a real estate agent, you wear a lot of hats, you know, we, we need to be able to do our own marketing. We need to be able to do, you know, th- there's just so many components to it. You know, we're showing houses, but then we have to make content and then we have to post online. And then there's just, there's so many steps that it can be hard to manage. I mean, people ask me all the time, how do you do it? I'm like, every day is a balancing act. <laughs> you know, like I try to schedule out like, okay, this is my content day. Or when I'm filming, I make sure to make like several videos, things like that. So that, it makes it easier, but yeah, it's, it's, you're always kind of juggling and and trying to make sure you're, you're prospecting, but taking care of your existing clients as well. I love that. I love that. Well, let's dig into more. You mentioned the, the day-to-day. I, I want to hear more about a day-to-day type schedule, maybe not down to the minute, obviously, but <laughs> I want to hear that type of schedule for a successful real estate agent like yourself. That's had this tremendous amount of body of work in just such a short amount of time. What are you focused on right now? How are you generating your business? How are, how are you making the phones ring or how are you um, making the client's phones ring? Talk to us about, talk to us about that. Where are you focused right now? So I'm, I'm focused in two areas because they say you should have two avenues of prospecting. You don't want to just do one, right? So, and there's, there's so many ones you could door knock, cold call, uh, but for me, it, it's all social media, but I break it down to, I do Instagram and I do YouTube. Um, I used to do Facebook, but honestly, for me lately, I don't really get clients that way. So I'm solely focused on Instagram and YouTube. So I, I spend time one, I, I research what are other people doing on Instagram. So that's part of it is like going through and researching, And then, um, and then I just come like, start coming up with ideas of like, what I want to post, what I want to film. Am I promoting a house? Uh, do I have an, like, I try to be very well-rounded in my content. Like I don't just post home tours. Like for some people it works, but for me, I like to, um, do some home tours, but I also like to, um, do educational or even if it's just, um, I may use a video clip, but there's educational verbiage on the, on the screen. So there's different ways of doing it. So I guess one day I'm kind of just planning that all out as like my content. And then, um, once I know what I want to do, then another day I'll go and shoot, you know, be it like one day is for home tours. Another day is, um, I just film stuff at home. Um, you know, the good ring light in your phone, you're, you're actually 
pretty good. <laughs> so, and honestly, a lot of my content, um, especially because I'm filming shorts, I repurpose that. So I will post it first on Instagram and then I post it to Facebook and then I post it to YouTube as well. So I'm getting content all that way. But then my other goal is YouTube uh, regular videos. So um, in my one of my planning days, I will I'm one of those people I need to have a loose script. I can't just, you know, like you <laughs> get on camera and have bullet point. Like I wish I could, but I'm like, I know what I want to say, but I feel more comfortable having like a script. And so um, I have that put together and then I know, okay, this is my, my day of filming content. You know, I get all my makeup, everything done and make sure it looks like I knock it out. I get my YouTube video plus any other educational shorts. So, and those two have been my main focus. And I mean, what I want to tell agents is in the beginning, it's, it's a slow build I, and it's very rarely will you post content and then boom, someone's like, Hey, I want to buy, or I want to sell. It just doesn't work that way. You have to like make the effort to grow and, and pr produce and post valuable content. And then you start to get followers. I mean, I'm almost at 16,000 on Instagram, um, and then my YouTube channel is about 1200 and I've just been slowly posting. I mean, I probably post daily, sometimes more than once a day, but I don't recommend that if you're just starting, um, I recommend make a goal of three to four times a week, but what you can do daily is post in your stories. You're out, you're showing a home, uh, you're out, uh, you see something funny or it doesn't always have to be real estate related because people want to see you as well. You know, that whole saying of people want to buy and sell or do business with people that they know, like, and trust. So if you're never on camera, how are they going to get to know you? You know, um, so I, I'll post stuff with like me. Oh, I'm out showing homes or I'm out with my family. I'm going to my son's soccer game. Um, I'll post family photos. You know, again, people want to see uh, like a well-rounded person, not just the robot posting real estate and they don't know who you are. So those are... I guess several tips I put in there. <laughs> no, it's so valuable. And it, it sounds like you've created an inbound marketing machine that is working for you, regardless if you're on vacation. Yeah. So it sounds like <clears throat> you have your Instagram. I know uh, it's been so successful, not only from the growth, but also from the GCI component and getting clients from it. And you have paired that up with another inbound marketing funnel, which is YouTube. Right. So for you, um, I, I think it's a very sustainable business model that you've created. I think it's fantastic. But what I, you mentioned, you alluded to it earlier, but I think a lot of a lot of folks might overlook this part. The patience component that involves yeah. that's involved when creating those inbound channels. You mentioned it yourself. You know, don't expect to make one post and or one video and then boom, help me sell my two million dollar house. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> So how, how did you stay patient? How did you stay motivated? Did, did you just like, Hey, this has to work because I I'm seeing it work for somebody else, or this has to work because I'm not wanting to do anything else. I, I don't know. Like how, how are you staying patient through those times as these inbound marketing funnels started to work for you? Um, I mean, I guess a little bit of everything you said, like, I just kind of knew, you know, I, I'd heard from other people who said, you know, you have to put in the work. It's not going to happen overnight. And finally, I, one day I'm like, you know what? Cause I, I kept going, like I'd post and then I wouldn't post. And I kept doing that a lot with Instagram, especially. And finally one day I'm like, this is it. I'm going to just post consistently. Um, but I'm going to focus on posting valuable content because admittedly, a lot of agents don't post valuable content. Like, and I've even, uh, provided some coaching to some agents on like, what's better to attract people. Um, and, and it's for me now it's like common sense, but not for everyone, you know? So you just have to, you have to literally make up your mind. What are going to be my prospecting methods? I don't want a cold call. I tried it and I, I hate it. I literally had call reluctance. <laughs> so it's not for me. For some agents, it works amazing. You know, I'm more of like, I connect better with people in person, or if they, or if it's like a warm lead, like they contact me and they want to do a call. I'm like, great. Yes. You know, I'll call them right away. Like I, or if people call me, I have no problem talking to them, but calling someone out of the blue is not for like, and they don't, they don't know who you are. <laughs> 
is not for me. Like I, I wish I could do it, but it's it's literally not for me. So I just knew, okay, I need two prospecting methods. And I set my targets on like Instagram and YouTube. Um, and I just realized the the world we're in now, it's like, it's all online. You know, most people shop for their homes online. So if you're not online marketing, it's going to be hard to keep making it in this business. I mean, yes, you can get do referrals, but not everyone has a huge referral network. Um, you know, if people are just constantly wanting help with real estate. So that was my focus is I'm going to do Instagram and I'm going to do YouTube. And I just made up my mind and I've been like really, really consistent on it. And it's like exploded in the past year. It's, uh, I mean, I don't remember what I was that in terms of followers last year, but it was a lot less. It was below 10,000. Um, I think it was about 5,000 actually. So it's grown a lot. Um, yeah. And I even got like a TV show out of it, uh, which has been a great opportunity. Cause again, that just elevates my brand um, and shows me as a local authority in Arizona. So let's talk about, well, yeah, let's talk about that for sure. From that's a huge opportunity that doesn't happen if you don't put yourself out there. Now that's fantastic. And that's something that, how did that conversation go? How did that opportunity present itself? And talk to us about that. Cause it's, that's just rare. The goal is selling more houses, obviously, but as you, <laughs> you know, that's what you were, that was your primary driver of creating this content. This wasn't a hobby, but these different business opportunities that come from the creator economy have just been incredible. I know that I've personally benefited from um, opportunities in equity stake in several software companies and things of things like that. So for you, um, at least one of them has been the the TV show. So talk to us about how that experience has been, how it came about, and um, what you're looking to do do with that opportunity. Yeah. So I. Something I started doing this year was um, I I would hire a videographer um, and just film local hotspots. This was something that that I thought, you know what, another way to pr bring value to my uh, followers, right? And so this was just an idea that I had. And so I was doing that. And then a lender that does the show um, recommended me. And as to, you know, potential someone that could be, you know, a good host. And so I was contacted and they said, Hey, do you want, you know, do you want to be a host? Um, they actually, there was a group of us agents there and then they doodled it down to like, uh, I think it was like, I don't know it was like a small group of whoever they selected. Right. But I think part of it is again, cause I was making this, I was already making content similar to what would be on the TV show. Right. Which is funny. Cause when they had all the ages together, they're like, if you, you need to be going around and, you know, making content that's local and posting about it. And I said, Oh yeah, I'm doing that. And they kind of looked at me like, really? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I've started doing that. I mean, my whole branding is moving to Arizona. So I, again, it's like, you just try to think, People who are following you, what can you provide them with? You know, what information do they want to know? I mean, yes, they want to know market information. They want to see homes, but also they want to imagine themselves living here, right? They want to, but the lifestyle, the culture, and that's what the TV show is all about is, is promoting the Arizona lifestyle, the culture, and some real estate. Real estate is not even like the focus. That's like the bonus aspect. So, um, and what I'm hoping to do with the opportunity is just connect m with more people, uh, potentially builders, ideally, and, and establish relationships with them um, where I can promote their homes and their business on the show. And then I ideally would be their exclusive agent so I could list their home. So that's like my goal um, to do with the show. In addition to just highlighting Arizona. Cause that's, that's something I, I love doing and I'm already doing. So I'm like, why not do it for the show? Right. <laughs> no, that's incredible. I hadn't even thought about that angle. Yeah. The yeah. builder angle yeah, is just so goal. huge. Mm -hmm. Wow. i to write this one down, Alejandra. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, well, before I get to writing, uh, let's, let's talk about, so those agents that are, in this real estate market that we're in. So right now, just to kind of timestamp it and put some context, because there's always, oh, the market is hard. Well, we've been, 
we said that in 2022 and we realized how easy it was um in yeah. hindsight no, it was uh, easy back then in my opinion <laughs> so, <laughs> i had showing so, agents so if you just get it done <laughs> a million percent a million percent so right now we have the whole um nar situation we have the whole buyer commission situation we have higher interest rates we have low inventory we have inflation we have an election coming up and i mean those are all things that are happening right now so this two show pass as we know but it might look a little bit different in a year from now or in two years from now or three years from now. And in fact it will look different there's no if it's going to look different so for those agents that are either getting into the industry or already in the industry that are looking to scale up, level up, whatever the case may be, what would you suggest that they invest in right now that's going to pay off in two to three years? This may not be a, an instant quick hit. You're not uh, not suggesting, hey, run Facebook ads. Not that that would be your advice ever, but what would you suggest that they invest in right now that could help them in two to three years from now? What, what would you say to them? Um, well, just, I guess it all depends on, well, one, they need to figure out how they want to prospect, right? Cause not, not everybody wants to do social media. I mean, it's, it's a great way to go, um, because it's so accessible. Everybody's on, I mean, even my mom's on, you know, <laughs> it's like everybody in the world, I feel like. So, um, I think it's about figuring out what you're comfortable with, what you want to prospect. Cause you, you have to know that prospecting is on your to-do list every day it should be like top priority. Right. Um, and I say, if you do do social media, then it would be, um, you know, it's like getting you know, a, a good, like ring light, you know, like breaking down simple ring light and, and start filming with your phone, but then also see if there's any agents that you can, I don't know, join with, um, partner with, or if you're new, like, um, yeah, like get with them on their team, some way to learn, because if you have no idea, there's going to be a learning curve. Like I've been now doing social media, uh, like six years. Cause then that that's, I've been doing that from day one. It was just different. I used to do Facebook. Right. And so, um, I've been practicing. There's, there's a lot of us agents that have been doing it for a while. So we're, we're, pretty good at it. Right. So if you're brand new and you have no idea, I would definitely, uh, figure out a way to connect with other people who are doing more, you know, who, who can help elevate your social media and your marketing. Cause I, I truly believe it's like the agents who are making the most noise that are standing out the most that are being creative and, and, and attracting people to them. They're the ones that are going to be getting more of those inbound clients, the organic, organic, um, marketing, I guess you can call it. So, and that, that's how I like to be. I like to do the organic where people are coming to me instead of me coming to them. <laughs> it's much easier. <laughs> I dig that. I dig that. Well, Alejandra, tell us, are you in growth mode right now? Are you building a team? Are you, of if agents want to either build proximity to you, whether they're looking for support or including if you are growing a team, um, well, maybe I shouldn't lead the witness. Like, is that, are you in growth mode right now? Are you building a team? Are you growing a group? Um, agents that need support, can they reach out to you? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it is something um, that I'm working on is yes, I'm growing. I, I get a lot of DMs. People are like, oh, do you offer mentorship and, and all these things? And I'm like, oh, okay. Enough people are asking me, maybe I should do something about this. So, um, yes, I, I'm definitely putting together something, you know, whether it's a team with people that are local or if people are, you know, in other States, then, um, then yes, there's a way to partner with me and that way I can help guide them and coach them on, you know, Instagram and YouTube to kind of help them really get started and then stand out because honestly, every market has so many agents, at least I know mine has a ton <laughs> <laughs> so you have to figure out how can I stand out and provide value and connect with people because there's so many other agents, you know, how do you have people stop and instead of scrolling past, how do they have, have them stop on your content and, and want to connect with you and see you as a local valuable resource or local agent, basically that they want to work with. So that's really the name of the game, right? A hundred percent, a hundred percent. Something that you mentioned really struck. We were having a conversation prior to this and I mentioned a comment that was made 
at at me that um I'm not gonna repeat it here because <laughs> um he's gonna see this. <laughs> so it's um it it goes back to the comment that you made really made me think about mentorship and coaching. Mm. And it's it was a coaching call and the information that was relayed to me was in a even though it was direct and hit hit home it wasn't made out of malice it was more of a hey are you aware type of a situation where that you could mm-hmm. be perceived this way and yeah. then i again I, I had the option of getting a you know taking offense and saying screw off or whatever or cut a big fat check for that person to continue coaching me mm-hmm. i opted for option two <laughs> so okay. cutting a big fat check for that to happen <laughs> Um, so I, I relay that, or I, it really made me think about that specific situation that just happened today, because when you mention mentorship, when you build, when you're talking about the whole folks reaching out to you, I'm glad that they are. And I, I wish more and more folks would, because just one single 15 minute session, a 30 minute session or whatever, just one conversation can absolutely condense a two hour, uh, uh, sorry, two year learning curve into a three month, into a two month. So the yeah. uh, how much faster you can go is just incredible. And it's really, I don't want to say limitless, but it's, you can go so much faster because at the end of the day, whether it's, whether you're paying for coaching or yeah, whether you're paying for coaching or not, where you're trying to get to is you're either going to pay with it with time or trying to do it yourself, or you're just never going to get there. Yeah. Right. So the two outcomes are going to be either you're paying it with time or you're paying it with actual money, or you just don't get there. All three of those options are not the best outcome for real estate agents. So it just, it made me reinforce the whole that for sure. But it also made me reinforce the, what you're doing right now is as folks are reaching out to you, I think it's huge. And again, shouldn't be undervalued because the reason that they're reaching out to you is because clearly you figured something out clear. Mm. So anything that they can glean from you is going to, we're talking about an $8,000 commission check. We're talking about $12,000 commission check. We're not talking about a $50 commission per sale. Yeah. So one single one single transaction can absolutely be a huge, huge win for every single agent out there. Yeah, it's true. So I just especially rambled. Right it wasn't, go ahead. <laughs> no, I was just gonna say, especially right now, because the market is just is so it's so different. You know, it's a it's a very it's a strange market. Some homes sell fast. There's it's uh, some of them don't. And then buyers with the interest rates, you know, they're so high. So it's uh, you've got to be able to connect with people and explain, okay, why it's still a good time to buy. You know, there's, there's so many reasons. So we have to uh, reassure people that what they want to do, you know, with their real estate um, transaction is, is the correct thing, you know? I mean, people, what, what we forget and kind of take for granted is we're guiding people on the largest purchase they'll ever make. I mean, think about it. A property is a large transaction, <laughs> which is why, like you said, we can make a good commission off of it. But we have to be able to be knowledgeable and be able to guide people uh, correctly, especially in this market. A million percent. Alejandra, how can the audience get a hold of you? Uh, there's a few ways, but, um, if they want to book a zoom call with me, I recently made a domain. Um, it's for my buyer clients, but I've added on their feature of, if you want to become a real estate agent is zoom to arizona.com. So you can easily connect with me there. Or if you want to check out my social media, it's moving the number to Arizona. And then on Facebook, on no, YouTube, it's uh, also moving to Arizona, but T-O. <laughs> so you can easily see all that. That's what's up. Well, Alejandra, thank you so much for being so gracious with your time, your information, just your presence. I really appreciate it. And we're going to include all of your information in the description down below. And everybody else, see you next time. Sounds good. Good to see you. Bye. <laughs>